Hi, my name's Mike. This is part three of Even Spirit Fills Followers of God Can Fall Away. As we read in the previous uh, parts about Saul and about uh, King Solomon and about Aeneas and Sapphira as well. Um, we must, as Philip, Philippians 2, 12 states, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Also in Revelation 3, 11, Jesus says, I'm coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take away your crown. So Satan can take your crown. Also, 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 27. Do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable reef, but we an imperishable one. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. Remember, after being saved, we must repent daily as we sin daily, whether it's words, deeds or thoughts. Remember, no one is perfect. Romans 3.10, as it is written, no one is righteous. No, not one. Ecclesiastes 7.20, surely there is not a righteous man on earth who does good and never sins. We need to repent daily. Remember when I was f first saved, I repented and then I heard it in a dream that night where God spoke to me and said these words, pray and repent and at times I will test your faith. But I could have turned around and said, why do I need to repent? I just did. God said this because we do sin uh, daily, not intentionally, as could have a bad thought or said something bad or argued or something. Hence, uh, repent daily in Jesus Christ's mighty name will keep our garment, garments white and spotless as Jesus is looking for a pure and spotless bride. If you sin and don't repent, your garments will be stained. That is when you must repent daily. Um, I'll just read First uh, John. Five, uh, first John 1, 5 to 10. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is the light, we, will, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. Um, so we need to put on the full armour of God, as it says in Ephesians, you're going to read Ephesians 6, 10 to 18, put on the full armour to make sure we don't stumble and fall. Remember Job and Satan trying to uh, you know, stumble him. Job 1, 7 to 8, The Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from, Satan? Answered the Lord, From roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. So be alert. Satan is out to get believers and make them fall, as it speaks in the last days in Matthew 24. And I'll read that in my next part. God bless you all. Bye-bye.